Good afternoon, members. We form a quorum. So let's start our meeting of the panel on manpower. Please invite the officials to come in. While they are being seated, let's uh, confirm the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, the minutes uh, was circulated to members on the 15th of May. Paper number CP213555, 1617, in respect of the meeting held on the 21st of March. If members have no objection, I'll confirm the minutes now. Any objection? All right, minutes confirmed. Thank you. Next item, information paper issued since the last meeting. So far, the Secretary hasn't sent any additional paper. Information paper to members. Item 3. Date of next meeting and items for discussion. The Secretary has provided us uh, with a list of outstanding items and also the uh, progress list of follow up action, uh, in, conjun in consultation with the Labour Department and the Government, we would like to cover the follow-up of the uh, report on standard working hours, and secondly, the Hong Kong's occupational safety performance in 2016. Let me say something about the report on standard work, working hours. We've been urging the government to produce the report, and now they're willing to give this uh, report to us on the 20th of June. Uh, so, uh, on top of getting an update, let's invite deputations. What do you say? All right. If there's no objection, we we'll invite deputations to attend the next meeting. But that means we have to extend the meeting. We are supposed to start at 4.30, and we start earlier, 3 p.m., okay? So next for the next meeting, we have two high items, Hong Kong Occupational Safety Performance in 2016, and follow-up action in relation to the uh, report on the standard working hours. Please invite deputations that you know to attend the next meeting. We are also going to upload the invitation to our website. The 20th of June will start at 3 p.m. The end time is 6.30. We can extend it if necessary. We we'll start from 3 p.m. and uh, end at 6.30. There will be no further discussion. Well, I've talked to Kwok Wai Kung, the other the chairman of the other uh, subcommittee. Uh, they will be inviting deputations to talk to them in June. Uh, so this is being arranged. Next item. First one, discussion item for today. Major findings of 2016 annual earnings and hour survey. We have a number of officials for the We have the um, uh, Miss Agnes Lo Kim Mui, Assistant Commissioner for CNS, Miss Wanda Yu, Senior Statistician, Labour. Mr. Raymond Ho Campbell, Assistant Commissioner for Labour, and Mr. Dasmin Hao, Principal Economist, FS Office. Can we have an introduction first before we proceed to a QA session? This is about um, major findings of the 2016 annual earnings and hours survey. Uh, my, I have a source. 
a sore throat today, so forgive my voice. I'll be talking about the uh, wages, hourly wages, weekly working hours. Let me talk about the uh, 2016, the design of 2016 survey. In terms of coverage, we cover major institutions and industries irrespective of the size of employment. And uh, the coverage of uh, employees, we cover everyone covered by minimum wage ordinance. And that is to say, uh, except government, uh, civil servants, and also trainees uh, or internship trainees or the live-in domestic um, helpers, we cover all jobs and occupations. And the uh, survey period is from May to June 2016. The, the selection of the sample is done in two phases. First, we choose among all the institutions and enterprises in Hong Kong, 10,000 such uh, entities. And then, uh, in respect of each uh, institution or enterprise, we have a random sur survey. Altogether, we collect information on uh, 60,000 employees. One of the important information we collect is the uh, monthly pay. We follow the definitions in the uh, employment ordinance. First, basic wages. Second, commission or bonus, which, is, which are not uh, a gift. And also, thirdly, guarantee bonus and allowances, except the uh, EIM bonus. And the fourth, OT allowance or bonuses and allowances or payment in kind which are given out as uh, gifts uh, including food and uh, residential accommodation provided by the employer are not covered. We took into account the total wages of the employee in that particular month including rest day, pay and also the pay in respect of uh, meal breaks are not counted towards the total number of working hours. The survey period is from May to June 2016. The medium income in that period is 16,200 for all employees. An increase of 4.1% over 2015. And other percentiles and levels with uh, all register increases from 3.7% to 5.9% compared with the uh, CPI composite CPI which is 2.6% uh, uh, and and the uh, salary the wages uh, I, were increasing faster than the uh, CPI composite CPI so there was real growth in wages and here's the breakdown in accordance with uh, gender, age profile, and education attainment levels. Whether uh, it's a male or a male or female, whether they are young or older, whether they are educated up to the primary levels or to the post-secondary level, their median wages increase over 2015. Uh, all about the inflation rate. <coughs> Now, for different occupations, now we divide into five main occupation groups. First, non-technical workers, service workers and sales workers, uh, crafts and uh, machine operators and assembler, assembling workers, uh, and then clerical workers, and finally, uh, management, management and administrative uh, and professional personnel. And for each group, the 2016 median wage compared to 2015, the annual increase is between 2.8% to 5.3%. The third group, that is uh, craftsmen, uh, 
machine operators and assembly workers uh, that showed the highest increase of 5.3 percent and the lowest percentage is for the management administrative staff and professional staff that's only 2.8 percent now for uh, different industry sections now uh, we look at four uh, low-wage uh, industries uh, the uh, retail uh, uh, the uh, uh, food and beverage and uh, property management and uh, miscellaneous and uh, others uh, including uh, the uh, construction and so on now for the four low wage groups, uh, the median wage increase is 3.3 uh, to 6.3 percent. Uh, now, uh, the uh, five groups combined is 5.5 percent. Uh, that's 4.1 uh, percent for, for compared to 4.1 percent for the overall uh, figure. Now, having looked at the monthly wage, the other uh, figure we look at is the hourly wage. When we uh, calculate the, month, the, the hourly wage, uh, we also take into account the definitions uh, of, for the work hours and uh, uh, payable salaries under the minimum wage ordinance. And the formula is the total wage uh, less the uh, wages on rest days and uh, wages for uh, uh, meal breaks uh, not included in work hours, and we divide that by the uh, total number of hours worked. And uh, if under the contract or by agreement, uh, now if the meal break, uh, if there's a meal break, we include that under the uh, total work hours. Now, uh, this shows that uh, in the period May to June 2016, uh, the 50th percentile, that is the minimum wage, that's uh, $65.4, uh, that's 4% uh, uh, up uh, on a year ago. And for the other percentiles, uh, it's from 4.3%. Uh, uh, 3.3% to 4.5%, that's uh, higher than the inflation rate of 2.6%. And our survey uh, showed that uh, in the May to June 2016, uh, those who earn uh, the statutory minimum wage, uh, that's uh, $32.5, uh, there were uh, 22,900, uh, that's uh, uh, 0.8 percent, and those who earn less than 33 percent, that is the current statutory minimum wage, uh, uh, third, less than 34.5 dollars, that's uh, 90.40,400, uh, 90, that's 3 percent of total employees. Now, how about uh, by uh, sex? Now, for male workers, the uh, Median wage for is uh, seventy three point five, uh, and for female workers, that's a uh, fifty eight point five percent. That's about twenty percent less than for males. That's been about the uh, ratio in the past uh, uh, years. Now, for workers of different age groups, for those in thirty five to forty four, the median wage is $75.5. That's uh, uh, f the highest of the five age groups. The next highest group, 25 to 34, the median wage is $67.6. .6. And ranking third is those uh, 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 45 to 54, and their mini median wage is $67. Now, uh, this uh, uh, ordering is the same as in uh, 2015. Uh, now, for now, by educational attainment, uh, of course, there are differences in wages, as can be expected. The median wage for the um, better educated earn uh, 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 those uh, earn higher wages, median wages. Now, for different occupation groups, for non-technical workers, 
the median wage is relatively low. That is $42.5 per hour. Uh, the highest earning are those in the management, administrative, uh, professional, and consultative uh, personnel, and they make $106.5 at median level. And the uh, ordering of the different groups are about the same as in previous years. Now, we also analyze the uh, distribution by uh, industry groups for 2016. Those who earn the highest median hourly wage is the education and public administration, followed by finance and insurance, uh, and uh, uh, electrical uh, and utilities, uh, waste management, and then finally uh, construction. And of the four groups that earn the lowest median wages, they are the four uh, low uh, income groups, uh, that is uh, the property management, uh, the uh, food and beverage, uh, the uh, miscellaneous activities, and retail. And then uh, we collected information on uh, weekly work hours that follows the definition of uh, work hours under the minimum wage ordinance. There are two elements. First, the contracted or agreed uh, work hours. Uh, uh, now, that's, uh, now, if both sides include certain meal hours are included in to, to be included as work hours, then irrespective of whether the employer has to work during the meal hour, uh, those meal hours would be included in work hours. The second element is the overtime hour, uh, number of overtime hours uh, at the uh, done at the performed at the instruction of the employer. Now, in 2016, uh, the uh, 25th percentile, the 50th percentile, and 70th percentile, uh, the distribution is about the same as in 2015. Uh, the, uh, uh, for the uh, medium level, uh, the wage level, the, uh, is 0.5% uh, lower, uh, and uh, for the 25th and 75th percentile, uh, no or little change. And this a slide shows, uh, as members requested la uh, last year, uh, the annual uh, the, uh, uh, household uh, survey. Now, uh, looking at 2016, now uh, on the consolidated household survey data, now uh, for the period um, April to June in 2016, the uh, median work hours is uh, 42. Uh, uh, as 4.5% uh, compared to a year ago. Now, uh, this uh, household survey, uh, it, the scope is uh, uh, compared with the uh, uh, earnings and hours uh, survey. Uh, now, uh, the household survey has a wider scope. Uh, now, uh, the uh, 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 and that also uh, under the household survey, the work hours refer to the uh, actual work hours uh, within the seven days before the day of survey. Uh, in other words, if uh, there were uh, breaks uh, uh, that were uh, uh, so those uh, would not be included. Uh, so the two uh, no, uh, are not directly comparable. Uh. And now we look at the uh, low earnings uh, industries. Now for retail, uh, the uh, work hours, weekly work hours, was uh, forty-eight hours for the. 
good and average. Uh, that's 54 hours. Uh, property management and uh, uh, and the security and cleaning workers, 48.7, and the miscellaneous activities, 48 uh, hours. Now. Uh, uh, for uh, food and beverage, there is no change, and uh, there was decrease for all the other three, uh, ranging from 0.5 percent to 1.7 percent less. Finally, uh, for those employees who earn lower hourly wages, the uh, change in number of weekly work hours. Now. If the uh, if for those who earn in the lowest uh, fifth percentile, uh, then it's 51 hours. Uh, that's a slight increase of 2.3 percent compared to a year ago. That's 1.1 uh, hour. The increase in work hours is mainly due to the fact that some of these uh, workers engage in part-time work uh, so uh, there was uh, an increase in the hours there uh, now for those at the 10th percentile or less the uh, median work number of work hours is 49.9 hours it's also a slight increase of half uh, an hour uh, more than in 2015, uh, or 0.9%. The reason is the same, uh, that is, uh, those who increase in part-time work uh, engage in more hours of work. And for those in the 15th percentile or less, the weekly work hours are numbered 48.2, Compared to 2015, it's an, a decrease for the two groups uh, under 20th percentile and 25th percentile. The number of work hours is the same at 48, uh, same as in 2015. Thank you. So members will now ask questions. But I'd like to remind you, because we have another item of agenda, where deputations will speak. So we will end our discussion on this item of agenda at 5.15. So we have to ask uh, shorter questions. Several members have raised <coughs> their hands. Lok Chong Hong, Hong Kai Ming, Kwok Wai Kung, Lok Kun Chong, Pun Siu Peng, Lao Siu Lai. Any more? If not, I draw a line here for now. If there is time, I will speak too. If not, I will not. Three minutes, please. Please uh, be succinct in your question and also for the answers. Look Chung Hong first. Now, so the minimum wage of $34.5 has just been fine-tuned, and it's a very low figure. Now, in 2016, those who earn less than $34.5 is only 3%. This year, it should be less than 3%. Now, for such for uh, st Protective uh, minimum wage it should be it should cover ten percent in other countries, but in Hong Kong it's less than three percent. I think the government should really review uh, the at the next uh, opportunity, and also we should take into account overall economic growth and uh, the overall trend in wage increase. Otherwise, the figure will be lower and lower. And at one point, it will be zero. So the minimum wage will be totally meaningless. And also, on the definition, uh, now, uh, under item 21, the number of work hours uh, means the contracted and agreed hours and the overtime hours. Now, this is problematic. <laughs> In Hong Kong, you can give in a, a large pile of documents 
just you are about to leave for the day, and uh, the the employer will say that you can uh, take care of that. Sure. So it's uh, it's uh, regarded as voluntary OT. This is particularly serious or common in the banking sector or design trade. So we should take into account the actual working hours. Instead of covering the overtime work, just overtime work as directed by the employer, and also the working hours under the agreement. Well, maybe your question is more relevant to the minimum wage, but this is just a survey. When we design the survey, we know that the statistics will be used in the analysis uh, related to the uh, statutory minimum wage. So we uh, follow the uh, definition of working hour in the uh, statute in the minimum wage ordinance for overtime work without uh, not un not directed by the employer is not covered in the survey. And uh, in one of the slides, I already explained that there's another survey, the general household survey, which sh shows the actual working hours in seven days before the survey. Uh, so in 2016, the number of working hours dropped compared with 2015. Mr. Ho Kai Ming. It seems that the lower the pay, the longer the working hours. For example, restaurant, 54 hours. And for those earning $36.6 an hour, they work 51 hours. And also, the, for those working an eight-hour day, they have to Work six days in the in a week. I know this is the census and statistic department. Did you try to ascertain the reason why they have to work so many hours? And also for the labor department, uh, we know that uh, the lower the pay, the longer the working hours. What will the labor department do to address this problem? Uh, CNS department. I won't repeat the definition of uh, working hour. For example, if you look at the retail trade, the medium working hour is uh, 48 hours, covering two parts. The working hours under the uh, agreement or the contract, that is the uh, contract working hour, and secondly, overtime, overtime work. From the analysis, Overtime hours account for just two to three percent of the total working hours. So the long working hours is due to the uh, contract. So it's in the contract that, roughly speaking, the employee has to work forty-eight hours a day, a, a week. Yes, generally that's the case, but of course, uh, it's very individual. Uh, standard working hours, the committee has submitted a report containing some recommendation. As the chairman has suggested, in the next panel meeting, we'll have a discussion on the report and how to follow up the matters. Within the current term of this government, we would like to set some direction for the setting of uh, standard working hours. Well, as the CNS department has told us, uh, the contract uh, states that it's 48 hours, and still the government wants to introduce contract working hours. So the end result is that we are going to have a lot of employees working long hours under the contract. Mr. Kwok-Weiker, the adjustment to the minimum wage rate, and uh, every time we have an adjustment, uh, the number of people benefited from the adjustment uh, drops. We're talking about people earning very low wages. 
And if the number of people benefited from any uh, wage rate adjustment, that means the general uh, wave, uh, general wage increase is uh, faster than the uh, adjustment of statutory minimum wage rate. So uh, in the future, uh, if we adjust the rate to $37, uh, we may end up benefiting no one because the market rate is at least a 38 or 39. So what's the use of setting such a minimum wage rate? And also, when can we have uh, annual reviews of the minimum wage rate? We've been talking about working hours. Now you, you, uh, you ask for information on the working hours sanctioned or requested by the employer. But for many clerical staff and other employees, they have this culture that uh, one should uh, leave uh, last for the day. Otherwise, uh, you are the first to go in next year's uh, reorganization. So how can we uh, make sure that we really reflect the true situation through our s the survey? Well, for security guards uh, and cancelling workers, yes, they are uh, low wage earners. But what about the retail and uh, restaurant workers? You know these uh, sectors are favoured by young people. Are you going to ask young people to take up low pay jobs and nothing else? How can we nurture our future generation in what they can get? Uh, low pay jobs. Well, I think uh, your questions are related to the uh, minimum wage, and uh, perhaps uh, they can say tell tell us something about the, uh, the sampling technique. Well, the information was collected from the employers. We asked the employers to produce uh, company records in answering our questionnaire for OT not requested by the employer, for example, the employee takes something back home to work on or is done voluntarily, the employer would have difficulties in furnishing the information or data. So the Standard Working Hours Committee did uh, consult, uh, conduct a general household survey some time ago to collect information on uh, working hours. Why don't we have uh, uh, someone from the Labour Department to answer questions on minimum wage? Well, yes, there are someone from the Labour Department, but this uh, item is on the uh, CNS uh, survey. Next, we have Mr. Nathan Law. According to the survey, the median is uh, 16,200 for cancelling worker. It's just uh, 8,700. It's a half of the medium wages, which I think is uh, the result of government, uh, partially because of government action. If we look at the contract award for cleansing operations in some districts, the general the wages increase, but the contract sums decrease. Let, let look at uh, one chai. In the 2014-2015, the contract was awarded to Bagil, Bagil. and then in 2015-16, the contract sum dropped when the contract was awarded to another uh, operator, so there have been cuts. Where did the cuts uh, implement it? Of course, uh, it's the cleansing workers' pay. There are 18 public toilets in Wan Chai. 15 of them have uh, nighttime shift workers uh, reduced. For Central Western District and Kwai Cheng, they are in a similar situation. So we can see that from this survey, that many low income earners, including cleansing workers, as the uh, biggest. Uh, organization in uh, contracting out such uh, services. 
and the uh, medium pay for a casting worker is just $8,700. The government ha is one of the contributing factors. You are one of the culprits. Would you take a hard look at the survey and uh, make amends? Would you be willing to look at the outsourcing system? For example, you can give different weightings uh, to the surface quality vis wages. But this uh, should better be discussed on another occasion. Or I have a question. Do you think it's uh, reasonable for cancelling workers to earn $8,700? Is the government contributing to this problem? Well, he, today's item is about a survey. So what do you say about the medium wage of 8700 Of course, uh, the medium wages of different uh, industries uh, varies a lot. Uh, it has to do with the structure of the trade. For example, for cleansing workers, most of them are grassroots, grassroots uh, employees. Compared with the banking sector, there are many ta uh, skilled uh, employees and the medium wage uh, will be higher. So that explains why the uh, medium wage for the cleansing workers is so low. Mr. Pun Siu Peng. Thank you, Chairman. When you talk about the medium wage, a one a sixteen thousand two hundred, an increase of a four point one percent. You cover overtime pay, and I want to know whether you can have uh, further breakdowns. What's the ratio accounted for by uh, overtime pay? And in uh, slide twenty. Uh, on the question of working hours, a restaurant no change, but all the other major industries, uh, there's been a slight uh, decrease. Can you explain why? And in page 96 of your full report, <laughs> well, the uh, property management employees work 72 hours, which is the longest among the major uh, industry. Is it because uh, the working hours as stipulated under the contract in question is already very low? Let me take the last question. For cleansing and property management industry, Many of these employees are security guards, and many of them are working 12-hour shifts. That's one of the reasons the wiki working hours in this industry is longer. And we do not cover government employees in the survey. For contractor staff of government, they will be uh, working both of the government and also private housing estates. So we do not distinguish the two groups. We just look at the actual working hours of their employees. And we do not ask whether their employees are working for a government contract or other contracts. For the first question, now what's the share of uh, contracted work hours and overtime workers works hours now uh, overtime uh, in 2016 that's only 0 0.5 hours so mostly it's contracted work hours now uh, so <coughs> next Lao Siu Lai and then Leon Kwok Hong several comments because it's not the right departments who are represented here. Now, for the cleaning workers, the hourly pay is the lowest, and uh, 
last time I in uh, concerning the budget, I asked for some figures, and I found that the cleaning workers uh, directly employed by the government they earn about twelve thousand dollars per month. For the outsourced uh, contracts, the wages are at the workers earn minimum wage. So the con outsourcing system arose because it said that the government was not good at management or it requires too much manpower in management. The purpose was not to uh, exploit the frontline workers. So I think the government, when it outsources, it should specify the terms so that the cleaning workers and the security workers should be the same as those workers directly employed by the government. The taxpayer is willing to pay more to for better management, not for exploitation of workers. So whether it's the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department or other departments, they should take this into consideration. Now, uh, looking at the distribution of uh, regarding work hours uh, for uh, fifty four point three percent uh, work more than the uh, the uh, uh, contracted work hours. So. This is uh, uh, so the standard work hours. Uh, uh, if it's not implemented, the workers are not protected. The contracted work hours uh, uh, only provide a basis for exploitation by the employers. Now, the standard working hours committee uh, was established in 2013. It uh, has spent. Uh, over sixty million dollars of public funds, and uh, 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 the uh, Hong Kong Hong Kong people uh, work a very high number of hours. Uh, if you look at the statistics, also com my third comment is that it's very strange. The uh, Ratio for uh, between the the differences between the sexes has widened, uh, so the labor department has to reflect on how to protect women's rights. And in the relevant panel, I will follow this up. Now we can talk about this next time. We will discuss the standard working hours next time. Next, Leung Kwok Hong, and then finally, Xiu Kao Chun. It's very sad. In 2005, I went with a colleague to the UK to study matters about social welfare. Uh, there was this concept of social inclusion. We want to be against social exclusion. Now, we talked about how to give people work and to give them a reasonable earnings wage. If people don't have work, you try to create work for them so that they earn minimum wage. That's what they do. It's inclusion into the labor market. People are absorbed into the arena of gladiators. So people do the dirty work of cleaning uh, and uh, they or they stand for so long in security jobs that the feet swell, and it's very low wages. So these are the pillar groups in our labor uh, pool. 
They work long hours. They create low value, so they earn low wages. The wages are depressed, and this is particularly inexcusable when the government outsources to companies. The government is the largest employer. It hires civil servants, and you outsource. And the workers in the uh, co subcontracted in the contracting companies have little bargaining power, so they are exploited. You should, in fact, provide them with subsidies rather than let them be exploited. Now, statistics is just a pair of eyeglasses. Uh, I'm not faulting them. <coughs> Unless you provide subsidies, you cannot resolve this problem of low wages, especially for this group, those who earn low wages from outsourcing. So if the labor market doesn't resolve a problem, the government has to resolve it. The government makes the problem worse by outsourcing. The cleaning materials and equipment increase in with inflation, but the wages fall. At Kayib Estate, those who wash the floor, I dare not approach them because these are the old ladies. They are only old ladies work, are willing to work these jobs. I work this, in this occupation too. It can kill people. Now, we can discuss in future on wages and work hours. Next. Xiu Ka Chun, the last member to speak. Thirty years ago, there was a song by Zhang Ai Jia on being busy and blind. Now, this song is appropriate today. Hong Kong people are busy and you are blind. Hong Kong has almost the highest number of work hours. Uh, a bank. Uh, Uh, said Hong Kong people uh, 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 work uh, about 52 hours. That's uh, almost uh, uh, that's quite a few hours higher than uh, Bombay. Now, wh which ranks uh, number two. Now, and the work hours doesn't even include those overtime hours outside those agreed or, or, or contracted. So we just know that the work hours are very long. The government says there are different opinions. Now, uh, in standard work hour arrangements abroad, uh, there are uh, different industries covered. Now, the government says that it will seriously consider the uh, views of the Standard Working Hours Committee. Now, after three years of discussion, as Lao Xiulai said, a lot of money has been spent, but the proposed legislation on Standard Work Hours has not been uh, implemented. Now, the is for, uh, the government has to provide response on the num appropriate level of standard work hours. Now, we are uh, discussing today the statistical findings. May we should leave policy issues to another meeting. Uh, any response from the administration? 
Now on the follow up on work hour policies, I believe there will be more in depth discussion at the next meeting. At the next meeting, one item of agenda is the progress of the Committee on Standard Work Hours. Now, Fernando Cheung uh, is, will be our final speaker. Please be succinct because uh, deputations have arrived for the next item of agenda. Yes, thank you. <coughs> the members just now have already said that Hong Kong has low wages and uh, high number, high uh, large, uh, long working hours. Now, now this uh, has been discussed with the Labor Department and the uh, unit under the Financial Secretary. Now these figures are our shame. We have uh, long work hours. We have uh, expensive living costs. The income of the men on the street. Now, for the 16,000 median wage figure overall is still insufficient for people to uh, feed their families. Now, I hope the statistics can be more detailed in the future. We are concerned about the disadvantaged groups, uh, including the disabled, the ethnic minorities. And I understand that uh, you can distinguish between the sexes. For females, the uh, they are the majority among the low earning workers. So apart from the sexual distribution, uh, I hope there can be the other breakdowns, as I mentioned. And also, if possible, uh, recent immigrants. Now, I don't know whether it would present a technical difficulty for you to cover the recent immigrants. Now, people generally get the impression that the new immigrants come to get our benefits. But I have come into contact with many new immigrants, especially women. They are willing workers. They earn low wages. They look after their families and they try to make some money for their family as well. They earn low wages. I think if we cover these groups, it would present a better picture of our society. Statistics Department. Now, this survey uh, interviews the employers, so we, there are Im limitations. Very often, the employers may not know the employer is a, a, uh, is a recent immigrant or someone who just got an ID after residing in Hong Kong for seven years. Now, for the ethnic minorities and the dis uh, disabled, physically disabled, and uh, now, our sample is not very large. Now, even if we get the figures on these groups, uh, we may not be able to publish the data on them. So if you are interested in learning about the wages of the disadvantaged, uh, disabled and the uh, ethnic minorities, please be patient because we uh, just completed the by census uh, la last year, and uh, the figures will soon be disclosed. And those data will uh, answer your questions. Will there be a timetable? 
Uh, I'm not responsible for that project, so I don't have a firm timetable, but I believe most of the reports would be uh, published within this year. Can you improve your uh, stu study methods? Uh, because you said you covered uh, 60,000 employees and uh, 10, 000, about 10,000 uh, companies, employers. Now, but uh, because you don't uh, actually interview the employees, it may not present a true picture. Now, we consider the issue when we calculate the hourly wage of the employees, we need accurate data on how many uh, dollars of uh, wages are being earned, and we need to have work hours up to the minute. So we need the employers to supply the internal record. For a selected uh, employee who would like to take a look at the uh, pay payment slips and relevant records, if we go to the employee for the information, well, it's not going to be more uh, accurate. Unless uh, there's a very clear statement issued by the employer, that generally the employee in answering this question would um, run up certain uh, wage figures. <laughs> For example, 9,500, he may tell us it's 9,000 or 10,000. And uh, working hours is even worse. For example, if uh, he worked for half an hour of overtime, he may say one hour. But in the information from the, em from the employer, it's more accurate. It's 21 minutes, then it's 21 minutes. So that's why we want to uh, collect information from the employer not the employee. All right, so if no further question, thank you. <coughs> we can now move on. Let's invite the deputations to join us. Alright, we're now on item number five, occupational safety concerning the construction of Hong Kong Zhuai Macau Bridge. We held a special meeting on the 12th of May to look into the occupational safety condition of Hong Kong Zhuai Macau Bridge. And then uh, it was subsequently agreed that uh, in this meeting, we will continue to discuss with government on the uh, occupational safety performance of Hong Kong Zhuai Macau Bridge. And we're also going to receive deputations today with 12 deputations and from individuals. After the deputations have spoken, 
uh, the chairman can invite uh, members to uh, raise questions or to discuss relevant matters with the administ administration. I would like to remind the deputations that you may wish to use the my and the earpiece. <coughs> Channel 0 is fraud, channel 1 is Cantonese, channel 2 English, uh, channel 3, uh, put on hua, please don't speak in a mixed code. Over to the government for introduction first. Commissioner? Uh, we have provided a paper in response to points raised and questions uh, asked by members in the last meeting. Uh, the paper care, uh, fully explains uh, what uh, the Development Bureau and uh, the uh, Highways Department in relation to the, this particular accident, uh, what kind of uh, safety uh, Measures and management measures and rescue rescue measures have been put in place, as well as a contract tender and related matters. Uh, my colleagues and I are happy to take question, questions. Let's have the deputations uh, speak first. Every deputation can speak for three three minutes. May I remind members that your speeches made here are now protected by cap. Three eight two. The powers and privileges uh, do not apply to you and or your speeches, as the uh, accident itself is uh, un under investigations. Please refrain from uh, discussing details of the uh, accident. The first speaker is uh, Mr. Chiang Man Kit. Thank you, Chairman. I'm German kid from the Civic Party, Colin East uh, office. So far, uh, we have ten workers killed in the in the project, and uh, many workers, six hundred workers, in, injured. Uh, there was an accident causing two fatal fatalities, and a number of injur injuries. Uh, we make. Um, Inspections and we, it, it was found that uh, many workers do not wear safety uh, vest, and many of them do not have a safety harness. I cannot understand why, with such a major accident, uh, did not come up with any clear clear measures to protect uh, these uh, workers. 1,384 inspections were made in the past years. Civic Party is not saying that uh, you are not paying any inspection, but you just uh, go through the motion. It's your job. You just do the inspection as part of your job. But uh, sa safety is not guaranteed just by complying with the law. Uh, irrespective of the site area, or the number of workers, the, the law re requires the employment of one safety officer or one safety supervisor. With such a big project, uh, the construction of Hong Kong Chuai Macau Bridge, with the di different work processes, and uh, with a lot of uh, workers, you only require one safety officer. Is that sufficient? And now the government is uh, counting on this uh, safety officer or safety supervisor to conduct site visits. It's just like uh, the, 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 the subject of an investigation asking the investigator to do a different job. Well, the safety officer is employed by the contractor. And uh, you don't suppose the safety o officer to inform on uh, his employer. So we should have independent safety officers and office uh, su safety supervisor. And the numbers should be based on the number of workers there. Secondly, 
in the past, uh, fines imposed were very low. The workers' life were just considered part of the cost. Uh, the bridge cost uh, $110 billion. The amounts of fines are just a small very small fraction of that. It's just considered a small cost to pay. Mr. Loki Man, the project started in 2011. Uh, every year one was killed, and, and so <coughs> for six years, well, we 1.6 uh, persons uh, were killed every year, on average. Over the years, uh, the, con the contractors were only fined just over a million dollars. <coughs> Human lives should attract higher fines. You should punish them by imposing. Uh, Hundreds of millions of dollars of uh, wage, wages, and the China State Construction has also covered up some uh, injury cases. Why don't you ask the China State Construction to furnish uh, statistics on the number of, on the number of uh, injured workers? A safety officer can be as uh, can be undertaken by anyone. I am also qualified. You just pay the course fee and you are qualified. Anyone can do that. And also, commission, Commissioner, have, have you ever visited the site area of Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge? You cannot. You can. Uh, <coughs> Ask your officers to conduct uh, visits on the lungs. If there are problems, uh, you can uh, issue warning letters or, or issue, issue a fine of uh, $5 billion, and then you can have uh, $50 billion uh, in revenue, revenue if there are 10 fatalities. There will be no need to ask for funding in this council. Well, the money comes from the CPG, where well, it's a pro-communist government policy to build the bridge. Hong Kong people has no need for this uh, bridge. What do you want us to uh, ask us to pay for the uh, bridge pro project? That's all for me, uh, Chairman. Next, Wu Sui San, Ms. Wu Sui San from Labour, the Labour Party. I have uh, submitted a written paper. Oh, paper. Uh, acting chairman asked us not to talk about details of the project, but how can I uh, express my views <coughs> without mentioning the project details? The accident had everything to do with the rush with, for the project. If the contractor did a proper assessment, and if the Safety harness was properly produced. And then, uh, when the platform uh, gave way, the workers would not fall into to the sea, and those these, those lives were lost due to the rush. If there's no rush, you can wait until it's the low tide, and then you can remove the platform instead of raising the platform. The platform. Would then not be uh, falling into the sea. In the sea, if uh, it's not for the rush, why you don't? It, they didn't stop the other work processes uh, when the uh, platform was being raised, and as a result, the falling platform uh, uh, carried uh, the, these workers down. Actually. Uh, Many workers risk their life in order to catch up with the uh, progress. You inspected the sign more than a thousand times, and still there were so many accidents. There was a meeting between us and the contractor. The contractor admitted that the the safety harness is is always put on the platform. There's no independent harness. So what did the labor department find during the inspection? So the inspectors uh, appeared blind to the, to that. Uh, the highways department, are you aware, Mr. Lee? Your colleague is here. 
does the highway department know? Uh, I asked three or four times, and then the highway department said it doesn't know, that there is no independent lifeline, and the labor department's uh, inspection seemed to be ineffective. This is not an isolated incident. We need to have a risk assessment mechanism where workers can participate. Like in Australia, if the contract is over a certain value, the workers should be able to participate in the safety supervision for the entire project. The contractor uh, so employs its own safety supervisors, uh, so it says, uh, so they say everything is okay. There should be no compromise. Workers should be able to enter home safe. Next, Mr. Aulok Him of Democratic Party. Please. <coughs> the Hong Kong Joy Macau Bridge, there was a, an accident in March. Two workers died in the past six years. There were many accidents regarding this bridge. Altogether, ten workers died. If you look at the cases, they show that we, this is an occupational safety issue. There are many loopholes with regard to this project. I, I ask a question on behalf of the workers. Now, uh, on the artificial mm. island, uh, how many of the uh, pillars uh, didn't uh, shifted in position? Mm. Mm. And they right now it's only by the uh, factories and industrial undertakings ordinance, and uh, so the fine is not enough because the upper limit is 140,000. Now, the uh, the ordinance says uh, the fine is uh, up to half a million dollars and the imprisonment is up to six months, but nobody was ever imprisoned and the highest uh, figure never reached the upper limit. Now, when looking at the tender documents, 60% is uh, weight is on price. Only 30% relate to occupational safety. So it can be seen that there is insufficient concern about occupational safety. So it's only 3% uh, of Waiting is given to occupational safety, so there should be increased inspections, and uh, those uh, infringements against the uh, FIUO and the occupational safety ordinance, uh, the penalties should be stepped up. Now, uh, only when a high mark is earned on safety should the contract be awarded. Now, on occupational safety, apart from the 3% waiting, what else have you done? Why is it that so many workers die? Your inspections are very limited. If you don't change, only what we'll see is that more workers will die. Next, uh, the Joint Association on Mechanical and Electrical Works. We have provided a written submission. Uh, we will not add more figures, uh, a few points. We should review the occupational safety inspections and follow-up work on work procedures. Are the measures really implemented or is it just superficial? And do, can we have figures on the fatalities, uh, 
how many are we are on local workers and how how many uh, imported workers uh, or uh, of of ethnic minorities are there now there are safety officers on the projects but they have heavy workload and they uh, work on their own so there is uh, uh, fragmentation uh, on the occupational safety health. So the uh, main contractor should uh, employ the occupational, uh, should employ the safety supervisors so that there can be centralized management. Now, we need uh, a lot of safe, uh, uh, safety supervisors, uh, but now they don't have such these supervisors do not have to be professionally registered uh, and uh, there should be registration system for safety supervisors so that their status can be increased so that they can do a better job. Now on safety training, the Labor Department has uh, open talks. Uh, now the arrangement is good but the time is uh, uh, it, but it takes place at hours that uh, workers cannot attend. So the uh, times of these uh, classes should be uh, able to facilitate the workers. And those who are responsible for work safety, the uh, Occupational Safety Health uh, Department should provide more training to them. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Leung Hoi Fu uh, on the uh, of the uh, uh, LinkedIn C Association. Now, so many workers die, and uh, money has been uh, poured in down the drains uh, in respect of this project. We know that. But now, workers are being pushed into the sea, one after the other. Now, if government officials tell me that the 10, uh, that the ten deaths uh, are too puny, then I would ask them to go home along with Chao Ho Teng and Si Wai Leung. We all want to be reunited with our family after work, and the media have reported on this. Some workers, they followed the safety standards uh, in accordance with international practice, but they were fired as a result. This is typical of Hong Kong society. The good people are penalized, the bad people are treated well. Now, if you manage to keep your life, you uh, you your health will be ruined by the time you are cured uh, years later, because the money is spent. Uh, in the infrastructure on the infrastructural projects rather than the hospitals. Now, the labor department should uh, deploy uh, undercover workers, investigators. Then the law enforcement will be more effective. Those who infringe against occupational safety, uh, those contractors should e immediately be dismissed. We should value people's lives and, and I should uh, tell the FTU that you should not uh, sell out the workers' interests, and please, everyone, value your value lives.
next uh, lab team social work uh, so, social network now we are going to talk about the work safety of the Hong Kong Trial Macau Bridge at the end of this month the bridge should be completed and at the end of the year the vehicle should be able to go through uh, in Gen in 2014 in uh, there were several accidents in for instance an excavator uh, fell into the sea uh, in then then in 2015 there were uh, more fatalities uh, a worker was hit by a brick and then a worker fell with the railing along with the railing into the sea and then the a work platform uh, collapsed and a worker fell and then uh, in May this year, uh, there was a uh, uh, fire out break out, and uh, and and uh, a South Asian uh, worker uh, fell from height. So, and the work platforms collapsed. Life belts were not independently attached. The whole anchorage fell along into the sea. The Hong Kong Chuhaya Macau Bridge uh, is a matter uh, has become a laughing stock uh, as far as safety is concerned. Of course, you can't prevent uh, accidents completely, but the follow-up measures uh, do not convince us that you value workers' lives and that you want to confront the issue. When accidents take place, the Labor Department says it will discuss with the Department of Justice on whether penalties can be increased, but uh, nothing came out of that. The Labor Department has issued re uh, uh, improvement notices, suspension notices, and 329 prosecutions. Uh, but fines only amount to a couple of million dollars. No one was held responsible. So this is what we see in 2017. Uh, is such handling convincing? Will you be able to sleep at night? May I ask the officials here? Recently, a resident told me that at least we know the num about the number of fatalities in, on in Hong Kong in the mainland. They wouldn't even hear about it. Next, uh, Hong Kong and Kowloon uh, Workers Union. Just now, speakers talked about the accidents in respect of the bridge, basically. Our union is very concerned about accidents. In 2015, in the first quarter, there was an, a substantial increase compared to previous years. Now, we know that a good safety system and sound uh, follow-up and implementation are all essential. But is everything implemented, or is it only talked about. Now, it, some speakers already mentioned that right now at work sites, if there are over 100 workers, there should be a full-time safety officer and safety supervisor. Uh, the safety supervisor would be required if there are over 200 workers. The safety supervisor doesn't have to be registered. Uh, very often, a safety supervisor has to be responsible for a number of sites, so he relies on the frontline staff. The uh, the safety supervisor is not required to be registered. Uh, he or she may have attended a simple uh, course 
or he is a senior worker, a gangs a, a gangsman, and then he can assume the uh, the role. And uh, sometimes uh, the uh, w gang leader uh, have to make progress to catch up, and then uh, they uh, they they tend tend to. Uh, cut corners and not uh, as uh, careful and that's why we have uh, accidents so uh, we have to look into whether the uh, functions of uh, safety officers and safety supervisors are clearly set out and if there's a rush and then uh, the worker who is also a safety supervisor well, he he's in two minds. Uh, he, he may compromise on safety. Therefore, the uh, Federation of Labor Unions want uh, to have a registration system for safety supervisors, so that the uh, safety rules can be uh, faithfully implemented for frontline workers. And uh, in 2013. Uh, the contractor reduced uh, expenditure on safety uh, in the contract with uh, Development Bureau. That's the most undesirable. There should be no compromise on safety. Next, Mr. Chan Pak Khan, uh, construction site uh, union. Well, it's uh, the Hong Kong Chuan Macau Bridge. It's also known as a Nai He Chiao. Uh, that means a a a, a bridge in hell. Uh, there were totally seven hundred days of the stoppage. If they have been doing a good job in safety, we're talking about two years in suspension of work. The uh, project will have been completed a year ago, and now it's twenty seventeen, and the project. Is still not yet completed. Uh, the uh, commissioner for the labor has issued so many suspension notices, totaling seven hundred days of suspension. Uh, that the uh, contractor should have uh, improved safety, but no improvement was made. Why? Because they have factored in the cost of uh, workers' lives in the total cost. Well, if one is a uh, Killed in the in the works, or what the insurance company would pay for, pay the compensation. It's just part of the total cost, which is a huge sum of money. In the accident on the 19th of March, we see some report saying that there's an I-beam hoisting platform and on the deck there are vehicles going and coming when the two I-beams are not anchored the platform under the I-beams would shift and as a result the workers were injured the entire platform plunged into the sea According to some the news photos, next to the work uh, working platform, there's a metal uh, scaffolding with no holding place for f or feet or hand. Uh, the workers work like their birds. So my question for the labor department: Did you issue? This particular guy and I to allow them to do this, this shouldn't be allowed. But we, 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 we did see. That's what the uh, construction site uh, look like. I hope the uh, labor department with us will salvage the working platform and conduct a follow-up investigation into the causes. On the other hand, there should be a comprehensive review by the government. Safety should be undertaken by independent people, independent safety officers, instead of asking the contractor to hire them. No one wants to lose.
their job, if they work for the contractor, they won't do anything. Safety officers should not be hired by the contractor, and the safety committee should have their workers' representatives. And uh, if there's an accident, you should not just impose a, a fine on the employer. On the mainland, uh, workers who, who got killed uh, would uh, lead to imprisonment of their employer. I hope this can be introduced into Hong Kong. Mr. Yu Yu Guang, uh, I'm from the Hong Kong Occupation Safety and Health uh, Association. Our uh, organization is an alliance of different uh, organizations responsible for occupational safety and health. <coughs> I under the, understand the concern of everyone here, but it's also a technical issue. It's the main cause of the accident, the uh, safety harness. I'm not in a position to say what the harness uh, was like, but there's more than one uh, cause. Just as uh, uh, the uh, Tao De Jing said, uh, one thing leads to another. There are priorities. There are different uh, causes. And now, before the investigation is completed, it will be too much uh, of a of a rush to come to conclusions. It will be irresponsible. I think we should let the authority to conduct the investigation first before we hold anyone accountable. Because of time limits, I can only say something about the view, uh, the how how the safety officers see this. After the accident, uh, there are people saying that the safety officers and safety supervisors are not independent, or they are not they are they are not of a. Uh, they are not competent enough. This is most uh, unreasonable to these uh, wo workers, these, these safety officers. The employer, i.e., the contractor, has an absolute uh, responsibility to provide a safe working environment. A safety officer, under the law, is there to help the employer or the contractor to provide a safe and uh, healthy working environment, so he's an advocate in this regard. There's no reason to suggest that it's about the competence of safety officers. Some also accuse safety officers of not being independent. Well, under the law, safety officers have have to be registered as and we have a set of professional code. If someone violates the, the code, uh, we, he can be uh, disciplined. And also, the Labor Department can also conduct the investigation and ha hold the officer accountable. We are there to make the suggestion to uh, the employer. If the advice given, if safety procedures are not followed, we can call the Labor Department through a hotline, but this can be done by not just safety, the safety officer, but everyone, every worker. So I don't think there's any problem with the power uh, enjoyed by the safety officer. I thank all the deputations. According to the administration, since 2011 all the way to 2017, the Labor Department has conducted 1,384 inspections, uh, issued 51 notices to suspend operation, and 237 notices to make improvement. There have been uh, 329 prosecutions, suspension notices, result in a uh, work stoppage of uh, 721 days. So I want to revisit these figures. You know the government has done a lot, but still things are most undesirable. There have been a lot of uh, fatalities and injuries, 
So where uh, do the problems lie? Uh, some deputations have uh, referred to the representation of workers on the safety committee or whether occupational safety and health should have a, a higher weighting in the tendering as a uh, process and also whether there's a sufficient deterrent to the encourage to make sure that the employer uh, attaches importance to safety and also what's the uh, implication of uh, of a rush to safety although uh, the safety officers enjoy some uh, statutory powers but can they really stop uh, undesirable or unsafe procedures? I'll ask the administration to respond first before I give the floor to members. Thank you. Let me respond to the suggestions or questions raised by uh, the deputations. And I'll be saying, about, saying something about the work of the Labor Department and then the uh, Highways Department and the Development Bureau would also be saying something about their jobs. Many deputations are concerned about whether safety officers are independent. But as Mr. Choi has said, under the law, the safety officer has to discharge certain duties to deal with uh, safety at construction sites, uh, we have to make sure that every stakeholder, everyone who works there has a role to play. And of course, different departments, labor department included and works department included, and also the project proponents, for example, in respect of Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, is the highways department. Every stakeholder has to do its job in uh, designing the uh, work processes and in the assessment of risk and in the adoption of uh, uh, construction methodology and the provision of safety devices to workers. All these are ultimately res uh, borne by the uh, contractor. When a contractor takes on such a big project, he would be very careful he should know how to hire professional people to achieve such objectives, including uh, architects, engineers, surveyors, site workers, and also a sufficient number of uh, safety officers to ensure what has to be done will be done. And as uh, Mr. Yu has said, we should not uh, ask the safety officer to be responsible and no one else because ultimately it's the responsibility of the contractor to ensure everything is uh, proper and uh, everyone has to pay his or her role in the uh, risk assessment and questions have been raised about whether we have done enough inspection well, resources permit, uh, we would uh, do more inspections as uh, we have stressed time and again. And we're not just talking about Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge because of uh, the sheer number of accidents, especially in such a big site, and many accidents involved uh, persons falling from a height. And we have taken targeted measures. Heist. In end of May, in early May, in uh, in in, uh, in April, uh, we all took targeted action. Now, we uh, conducted uh, two thousand over two thousand inspections. We over issued over four hundred resp uh, 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 stoppage orders. Uh, 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 and the uh, suspension orders and the uh, prosecutions, uh, hundreds of them. 
Now, of course, we can't devote all our manpower to uh, to this project we, we, because we have uh, other inspections to conduct. Uh, but we will focus uh, our efforts uh, regarding these uh, uh, projects. Uh, these will be special projects to which we will devote our attention. <coughs> And members expressed concern about the penalties. As I said in the last meeting, members and the public are concerned about whether the penalties regarding occupational safety and health are adequate, uh, whether the actual sentencing by the court is too light. Uh, I promise that I will study with the Department of Justice on whether there is room for change for the better. And perhaps we can do something uh, to amend the legislation. Now, as for other issues related to the works at the Hong Kong Chuhai Macau Bridge, and regarding the tendering uh, process, uh, I will ask my colleagues to explain. Highways Department first. The Highways Department believes that uh, one accident is too many. We will not sacrifice safety for, pro for speed. Now, after the March 29th incident, the, the Highways Department asked the contractor and consultant company for the Hong Kong section of the bridge to review and uh, implement safety measures to ensure that occupational safety is observed. Now, the uh, director of highways uh, also met with the senior management uh, of the contractors and reminded the consultants and engineers uh, and the contractors uh, that they should enhance measures for uh, site safety, uh, improving the safety culture, stepping up management and requiring the contractors uh, and the uh, consultants to jointly create a maintain a safe working environment for workers on the uh, job rush issue uh, now regarding the work process on 29th of march it was a uh, dismantling of the work platform it was not a key uh, procedure the contractor should have sufficient time to dismantle the platform. The arrangements adopted by the contractor uh, in for the dismantling of the platform will be the subject of our uh, investigation. And we are also concerned about other isolated accidents uh, that we came uh, that we uncovered, and we. Uh, called upon the uh, contractor and the consultants to conduct reviews. Uh, these isolated accidents uh, review deficiencies about workers' awareness uh, and uh, procedures and Implementation measures uh, uh, have been urged upon the uh, contractors and the workers' representatives uh, are now uh, going to be given uh, a seat in the Committee on Safety uh, on Work Sites Development Bureau. The government attaches much importance to construction safety. We have the determination to uh, 
enhance work safety. Uh, every fatality uh, is a tragedy that we want to avoid. Now, as the director said, uh, the safety officer is one element in the safety system. We have the safety monitoring system, uh, various measures, uh, and training for workers and promotion of site safety initiatives. Now, uh, on tendering and management, I want to respond. Now, uh, it's been mentioned that of the 100 points, uh, 60 points is about the tendering price, 40 points is about the performance of the contractor during the past uh, seven years. Now, uh, 37 points is about uh, management performance, job quality, and work and the safety performance. Now, if the quarterly uh, performance is safety performance is poor, then that will affect the overall uh, quarter's performance. And there is an additional three points that will be targeted uh, at the accident rate. That was the, the design. We conducted some sensitivity analysis uh, regarding the 3%. Now, uh, as we said, it's based on the performance in the past three years. Now, if uh, the performance for the past three years was poor, then uh, only if the tendering price uh, was lowered substantially would that be outweighed. So it will affect the company's tendering in the coming three years. Now on uh, regulation at the Development Bureau, we can uh, regulate in accordance with the Contractors Management Handbook. Uh, if it's, uh, uh, it's not just uh, uh, performance in public projects. It's also a, a performance in private projects. There has to be independent safety audit. Uh, we issue warnings and we might uh, suspend their qualification, their eligibility for submitting tenders. It can be for at least one year and uh, we might even remove them from the list of eligible contractors. So we hope that only Contractors with good safety records would remain on the list. Now, we also set aside incentive funds. Now, if there is zero accident for during the month, we pay them. If there's, there's zero accident in for a year, the incentive pay is further increased. Thank you. And now members will ask questions or comment. In the queue are uh, Pun Siu Ping, Lao Siu Lai, Fernando Cheng, Lok Chung Hong, Ho Kai Ming, Xiu Ka Chen, Chen Pu Yin, Leung Kok Hong. Four minutes each. Pun Siu Ping first and then Leung Siu Lai, Lao Siu Lai. We thank the deputations for providing the comments which have been very specific. Human life is paramount. Now apart from the uh, Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau bridge accidents, there have been a, an increase in industrial facilities generally this year. This is a matter of concern. Now uh, seven or eight lives have been lost in respect of the bridge. Now, the government says uh, uh, there have been uh, over uh, 1,300 inspections and over 300 prosecutions. But as pointed out by the media, some workers didn't have their safety belts attached at the work sites. So it appears that supervision is uh, is inadequate, inadequate. Now, the government doesn't want to see work fatalities, but the issue 
is still serious. Now, speakers mentioned the arrangement uh, about safety supervisors and safety officers. Now, I don't know if the government will conduct a comp comprehensive review on safety management and legislation, uh, including uh, studying the employer's responsibility. Now, the factory and industrial undertakings ordinance, uh, under that ordinance, there is a uh, supposed to be uh, a disciplinary committee, but there's a uh, uh, list of members on the list, but the, there has been no action. Perhaps there should be cases uh, to be assigned to this committee to study. The director? Now, co Commissioner, now uh, I already said that we are considering a review of the legislation. We are conducting preliminary work. We have reference to uh, similar legislation abroad. Uh, what uh, are the differences uh, compared to Hong Kong, uh, especially regarding penalties and so on? Now. Mr. Poon mentioned that uh, how we uh, how mentioned the question about how we manage the safety supervisors. So uh, I asked Mr. Wu, our assistant com assistant commissioner, to re elaborate. Now the member appeared to be talking about the. Committee on uh, Safety Audit. Now, if the auditor doesn't perform too well, then we can uh, examine that at the uh, meetings of the hearing committee to see if we can adopt uh, disciplinary measures regarding the auditor concern. Now, in the past, it's been uh, rare that we resort to this mechanism because uh, after our inspections and investigations, we haven't found any auditor uh, not doing their job. Now, the safety supervisor, uh, the safety officer, rather, is another mechanism. If the safety officer is derelict in his duty, or his uh, uh, performance is unsatisfactory, we can suspend the registration or even cancel the registration. And uh, there have been cases in the past where we uh, suspended or cancelled the registration. Next, Lao Siu Lai and then Dr. Fernando Cheung. Uh, on the accidents at the Hong Kong Choi Macau Bridge. Now everyone is very anguished. Now these white elephant projects. Now the uh, these uh, involve um, so many accidents and they are so uh, often uh, so uh, incompetent. <laughs> Why do you think that uh, giving a weighting of three points would be sufficient to ensure safety? Is that the contractor is uh, ultimately responsible, so he has to make sure that safety is achieved. But if the safety only accounts for three or five points for in the scoring system, how would the contractor ensure worker safety? Why do you set your... Uh, scoring system like that. In other countries, safety accounts for 20 or 30% or of the total. Why are we doing this? If you look at this contractor, China Harper Company, in the 
Bangladesh, Indonesia, China, whatever they build,、uh, it will collapse. And they involved in、uh, bid rigging in 2015. It was involved in、uh, corruption. How are you? Why such a non-performing contractors has been getting many contracts? Please tell us、uh, the scores they got. Please tell us the scores. And I'm also. Very unhappy about the Labour Department's response. You said the contractor has been trying to. You have been trying to improve sanctions, but so far there's been no improvement.、Uh, a life just costs、uh, tens of thousands of dollars.、Uh, there should be a barrier、uh, with a minimum height of two meters to prevent people from falling overboard. And now the fine is just nine thousand dollars, lower than in the past. The government cannot shirk its responsibility. Please tell us、uh, how, what you are going to do to improve safety. Well, you're saying that one accident is one too many, and it affects the、uh, well-being of、uh, of、uh, families. But what have you done to ensure worker safety? For the first two one, I think it should be for the. Development Bureau to respond. It's on a tendering. Well, we talk about forty points. All of them、uh, have a safety, have a safety aspect. It's not just three points. Let me reiterate. For the thirty-seven points, we look at the contractor's performance in the past three years. Uh, uh, I.e. Uh, the quarterly assessment reports, and in the assess quarterly assessment reports, there's a、uh, one element, one section on、uh, safety. So if they're doing a good、uh, job in、uh, management and and not so well in safety, they will affect the、uh, performance. Well, accident rate accounts for just a few points, and、uh, an injury、uh, is. The same in waiting as a fatality. Well, we want to get a objective figure apart from the quarterly assessment reports. Well, you know that、uh, in in the UK, there are sixteen different、uh, items and、uh, there are different、uh, scores for fatal accidents or any injuries. You think you are objective?、Uh, injuring. The worker's hand is the same as、uh, killing the worker. Can you tell us、uh, the、uh, scores obtained by this particular contractor? We all attach importance to safety. The three points,、uh, as we said, have been subject to、uh, sensitivity analysis. Well, you may wish to reserve your questions later, and we do not just rely on this particular part to assess the、uh, contractor's safety performance. Tendering is just one part in a in a in a in a chain. Well, they have had so many incidents and accidents. How did they fare in the, the scoring system? I've done the sensitivity analysis. If they are doing bad in the past three years, then in order to catch up, they will have to lower the prices very to a very low extent. Well, the contractor has been、uh, causing a lot of accidents since、uh, 2011, and they are still getting new contracts. You are saying that a safety officer is not the determining factor, and、uh, you are not doing your job in the tendering process. Just three points. How come this contractor with such a poor track record can win? Could win the contract? Can you tell us、uh, the scoring system? 
and the performance of this contractor is a 37 points plus 3. 37 points are derived from the uh, quarterly assessment reports in the past three years. In extreme cases, they can uh, lose all these points. But if you look at the accident rate, if they lose the three points, the tender price in order to compete with other the bidders, he would have to lower the price by six percent. In other words, uh, you go you award the contract to the lowest bidder, ignoring human life implications. Uh, I, the Labour Department has not answered my questions. I think we have to wait for the next one. Dr. Fernando Chow and then Mr. Luke Chung Ho. Well, this subject has been brought up for discussion a number of times already. There's an application for supplementary provision, and we put questions on uh, the uh, accidents, the 10 live, 10 workers uh, killed. How come we've uh, ended up like this? According to the Commissioner for Labour, fatal fatality rates and uh, injury rate do not exceed the general picture for all industries. In other words, the uh, accidents uh, at the Hong Kong Chuan Macau Bridge are no different from other construction projects. It seems that the administration is very happy, is very satisfied about its safety performance at the uh, site of uh, Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. That's why they said this project is no different from other projects. So I have this question for the Commissioner and the Development Bureau. Are you satisfied with the uh, safety at the uh, project? At the project site, or injuries and uh, injuries of workers and fatalities are just part of the course, and we we are bound to have uh, fatal accidents and injuries, and that these contractors will be uh, will be considered okay if they perform very much like other contractors. Ten uh, people, ten workers killed, more than six hundred uh, workers injured. Are you happy with uh, this situation? I think they have already answered this question. They have said that uh, an accident is uh, one too many. Well, I provided the figures last time, not intending to s say whether it's a territory wide figure or a figure for a particular project, we are satisfied with the situation. As the chairman has said, we are not satisfied with uh, any uh, figures on uh, accident, fatal or injury for major projects, public works projects. The Labour Department and the project proponent, in this case, the Highways Department and the Development Bureau all attach importance to safety compared with uh, private developers. We have done mo much more to promote safety. As uh, Since the Bureau and the departments are not happy about the situation and you attach importance to worker safety, now uh, we have uh, fatal accidents, we have uh, accidents causing serious injuries again and again. What are you going to do to make improvements over the current uh, state of affairs? Many people have uh, told you what should be done. Uh, workers, uh, organizations have uh, pointed out the uh, shortcomings in your work. I don't have time to repeat them. So 
What specifically are you going to do to improve occupational safety and health for workers, Commissioner? Uh, the major task ahead would be to review the uh, penalties in the current uh, labor legislation. And we have also conducted other operations, for example, uh, to target the construction industry, especially working at a height. We have uh, for the two months and months uh, ta targeted and specific uh, operations. I won't repeat the statistics. And recently, we have talked to stakeholders, including the Occupation Safety and Health Council, trade unions, and other organized stakeholders. We have uh, launched a major occupational safety and health campaign with organized seminars. We have uh, introduced uh, uh, subsidies to help workers to purchase the Y-shaped uh, safety harness. Don't underestimate the effective of this. Usually when there's an accident, it's because of the lack of safety helmet, or if uh, there's a no strap, proper strap to keep the safety helmet on, then the worker is not protected from a, from a fall. And we've also conducted seminars with stakeholders to see how we can imp improve our work processes. For example, we want to do something in particular for the scaffolding industry. And uh, instead of the traditional methodology, we now require a platform for the uh, scaffolding worker to to stand on there will be a requirement of 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 a of a suit uh, bamboo the uh, supporting frames together with the platform if this can be done and we'll talk to the occupational safety and health council it would uh, significantly improve the safety of uh, risky work such as building scaffolds at a height and we have uh, in this been we've been in discussion with the buildings department over building design for example there should be a safe uh, working platform for air conditioners so that uh, there's a protective uh, structure for the future workers to repair and maintain the uh, air conditioner instead of relying on a temporary suspended uh, scaffold. And uh, we also require the contractors to be equipped with proper safety gears. I want a timetable. They have been talking about uh, uh, seminars. You need to review the laws. When can that be done? It's just all talk. When can they implement all the measures? Well, we have a timetable in terms of legislative amendments. We are doing some preliminary work. My colleagues are looking, are referring to similar legislation in other jurisdictions, but we need to uh, discuss with relevant parties before we have a concrete timetable. Maybe next time we can uh, inform the panel of the uh, progress. Mr. Luk Chung Hong and Mr. Ho Kai Ming. Mr. Luk, I'd like to thank the deputations for coming to talk to us and express their concerns about the safety at the construction site of Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. Indeed, uh, one accident uh, in, uh, calling, uh, causing fatalities uh, is one too many because uh, the accidents affect the workers' families as well. Now we have 
said in the past two years uh, regarding the factories and industrial take undertakings ordinance, why is it that uh, people were not imprisoned as a result of offences? Uh, the answer is that it has to be proved whether there was intentional omission to take the safety measures. Now, I'd like to ask uh, regarding this. Now, uh, it's hard to prove intention as long as the person claims is in uh, negligence or uh, omission or carelessness, then uh, he doesn't have to be responsible. Now, also about the safety officer. Now, right now, the safety officers are, are employed by the contractor. So it's uh, self-policing. Has the government reviewed this mechanism? Should there be an independent means of recruiting the safety officer. The cost has to be borne by the contractor, but the pay is not directly from the uh, contractor to avoid conflict of roles. Now, there is now licensing for safety officers. Now, I won't say that they are not professional, but perhaps the professional uh, recognition is not high enough. Say for a doctor, the uh, license or professional registration of the doctor is very important. Now, perhaps you can make the a uh, license of the safety officer uh, too valuable to lose. Now, very often we found that accidents occurred shortly after an inspection. Finally, about tendering. Now, just now, the uh, deputy uh, that the uh, uh, representative of the Development Bureau said that uh, if per a contractor performs poorly on safety, then he has to offset that with a very low bid. Now, so in that case, he it might be a vicious circle because then he would have to uh, reduce uh, the safety measures uh, in order to reduce costs. And uh, it's heard that the China Harbor, em Harbor Engineering won the bid because it submitted a very, very low bid. So that's in spite of its poor safety record. Now, also, on penalties, in the past few years, how many contractors were prohibited from submitting bids? Well, uh, your question is good. Uh, I don't know whether the answer can be short. Uh, can you wait a while for your, for the next round. Oh, okay, the Development Bureau, please provide a brief answer. Now, uh, the vicious circle will not occur because we have a line of defense. The department, when it receives the tendering document or bid, uh, we look at the safety performance. Now, we wouldn't accept the bid if the safety performance is poor. Now, out of 130 contractors, we have penalized 30 of them. Uh, they have been suspended from submitting bids for six months to one year uh, in the past uh, 
Yes. Now, you said that in April you conducted uh, targeted uh, inspections and there were uh, over 170 suspension notices. And even after the accident occurred, there were more suspension bids. So suspension notices. Now, you said that the penalties would be increased, but some prosecutions have not been taken, uh, resulted in court hearings yet. The hearings take so long. Some cases have not been heard for two and a half years since the prosecution. So you somehow let the contractor to delay the process. And also I'd like to ask the Development Bureau. You said that when, when the safety performance is poor, then you would prevent them from submitting bids. Now, what do you regard as poor? Looking at Annex 2, uh, the dollar amounts are in thousands, but the project values are in hundreds of millions of dollars. So, say, in building maintenance cases, minor incidents are often ignored. But for these uh, multi-million dollar projects, the fines are only in thousands of dollars. The Development Bureau? I will respond on safety performance. We don't look at the amount. We look at the number of workers and the number of incidents. We don't look at how large is the size of the project. Now, in two weeks, you uncovered over 170 cases. Will the contractor be prevented from future bids? We have to wait till the report is completed. There have been almost 20 pages of prosecutions against them. As I said, in the past 10 years, uh, 30 contractors have been uh, suspended from submitting bids for six months to one year. So half year to one year. For them, it's actually quite short. Why is it that the court hearings took so long? Now, just now I mentioned that in April we took targeted action against the new contracts. That was on Hong Kong. It's not on the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge alone. There were 175 prosecutions. And why is it that prosecution takes a long time to conclude? I will ask uh, Mr. Wu uh, to respond. Now, the, uh, where the litigation is ongoing, the Labor de uh, Department has already issued uh, a, a prosecution notice, and sometimes the cases take longer. Uh, now, usually accidents are involved if the defendant company chooses to uh, 
deny responsibility, then uh, court hearings will take time, and uh, so it will take longer for certain cases. Now, when uh, the Labor Department issues summonses, uh, it will not take too long because under the law, the summonses have to be issued within six months. But uh, the Labor Department has no control over the time taken for litigation because the court often has to deal with a large number of cases. Next, Xiu Ka Chun and then Leung Kok Hong. Now, this is not the first time we discuss the accidents in respect of the Hong Kong Chua and Macau Bridge, but there are some new elements. What's repeated is that some speakers, and, uh, uh, for instance, Mr. Chen Pak Ken, reiterated that 10 people died, 600 plus were injured. Now, every time I hear these figures, it is very alarming. What is different is that when the officials responded last time, you were more sincere. You repeated that one accident is too many. But when you said it last time, I felt that it was more heartfelt. But just uh, a short period of time later, you just treat it as another figure in your file. I hope you, uh, the Commissioner of, for Labor, will be as personally concerned as when he argued with a member just now. I will ask some simple questions first. Just now, Dr. Cheung, our Chief Assistant Secretary uh, for Development Bureau, talked about the bits. Now, if we adopt your example, now if 10 people died in China Harbor Engineering Project, uh, how much does it have to reduce the amount of the bid before it can compensate for the poor safety performance with 10 fatalities? And the marking system referred to by Ms. Lao Siu Lai, will you review this marking system? Now, can you tell us how you uh, attach uh, the points to the number of fatalities? Now, I heard that several years ago there were a lot of fatalities at uh, mines in China, but the uh, accidents keep recurring. So the government tells, requires the bosses to go and walk in the mine shops, and then the bosses take action. Now, if your family members ask you whether their children should work in this project, how will you answer? Now, I'm referring to the management of China Harbor Engineering. If they go to the scaffolding, if they go, if they go up to the work platform, I'm sure they will take measures to reduce the number of accidents. Well, human life is uh, priceless. That's why in the tendering system, we look at the scores 
and there's also a final line of defense. We will objectively look at the safety performance of the contractor. If there are serious um, accidents, serious uh, defaults, the contractor will not be recommended. What about losing 10 lives of, uh, by the contractor? Are you going to suspend their eligibility? Would they be barred from tendering? Well, the uh, inquiry panel would uh, lo look into this. And the highways department and the labor department are also conducting uh, independent investigations. We'll tie in with whatever measures require. Mr. Liang uh, there was a Chinese spoke called Pai An Jing Qi or the surprises and turns of uh, of government uh, government acts. Uh, it's important that government officials should not uh, regard human lives as worthless. I don't know whether this applies to you. Even if the uh, deaths are caused by someone else, you should stop uh, defending them. This one. Uh, whatever it builds, uh, the it is followed by collapses. Indonesia, Mal Malaysia, and the dam in Bangladesh, and our bridge project from uh, 2004 to 2014. That's their track record and corruption. April 2015, foreman a foreman uh, bribed uh, the. Uh, Con con contractor bid rigging, a highway project in the uh, Philippines. Uh, the this company involved is was found to in be involved, and the World Bank uh, disqualified this company. In twenty fourteen, a worker uh, for fell into the sea. No safety vests, no safety jacket, and uh, other accidents. At Hong Kong Chuan Macau Bridge, the recent one in March this year, altogether 10 lives. Questions have been put to you, and you'll talk about the assessment criteria 60% on the quota, quota prices, and for the 40%, remaining 40%, 37% on the past performance, and 3% on safety. So, what's the computer system you use in uh, in uh, awarding the contracts? Did you suffer from any virus infection? And also, over a rub, was awarded a consultancy contract of three hundred and fifty-seven billion dollars. So, three hundred and fifty-seven million dollars. They try to steal data gather for Wang Wang Chao project. I took the report from Mr. Mr. Ma Chiu Chang, the Under Secretary, and now I've been uh, informed by the Central and Western uh, Police that uh, I will have to answer questions because uh, someone has reported the case to the uh, police. So the, the, they are barred from uh, tender, further tendering. It's the same here. Maybe we can uh, allow them some time to tell us whether they have uh, taken into account the contractors' uh, track records. Have all these uh, issues? Well, were all these issues considered, Doctor Zhang? Wait, wait, wait! They would like to respond. We are not just looking at the scores. We look. <laughs> Look at the quarterly reports for the past three years. Oh, so you do not take into account overseas uh, projects, only Hong Kong projects, right? And uh, nothing in relation to projects 
completed more than three years ago. It's about the Belt Road Initiative. It's about the ASEAN project. We've just approved funding for setting up an EDO in Jakarta in one of the ASEAN countries. But a fatality is the same wherever it happens. You don't do your job before and after the tendering exercise. I've checked, Chairman. I've checked the information they provided to me. For this uh, Hong Kong Dry Macau Bridge, they got 20 suspension notices at the very end. And then uh, there was, there's a need to rush. And uh, that would uh, that led to more fatalities. The contractor had a poor record. Uh, you are you are the, not respecting human life. No officials should do that. I'm not talking about the eight officials here. Yeah? I'm talking about those people behind them. Not Hakuokake. The main contractor, well, I'd like to seek a clarification, is a China Row and Bridge, right? Uh, what are the main contractors? Dr. Zhang? Highways Department or Development Bureau? Can we have a confirmation first? You don't know? Highways Department? Chairman? The name is uh, on our website. Ch China? A joint venture poker wise four, uh, including China Harbor construction. It doesn't matter if there are fatal accidents. Uh, the total cost is uh, one hundred and fifteen billion dollars, and the total fine is just one under one million. It's just a small sum out of the total. Uh, Mr. Chen is not is not is as is new to the post of commissioner. The previous one has been promoted with more and more fatalities. Uh, you continue to award contracts to over Arab to China Harbor construction. They don't care about the uh, penalty. It's the bigger sum. Uh, of uh, one hundred and ten billion dollars that counts every time that when there's an accident a fatal accident you would uh, do some strict enforcement action and then uh, there would be two more fatalities and you may help, you may be uh, to hang on until the bridge is completed for this uh, China harbor construction. And now we arrive with such poor track records. How come they can still be on the list of uh, tenderers? I want you to explain why, Dr. Zhou. I'll talk about the sanctions for every serious incident after the Labor Department. Well, perhaps you can tell us. How many fatal accidents do it take to the f before you you punish the contractor? Well, it's not solely based on f fatal accidents. So you need injuries as well before you can punish the contractor. So are you saying that the numbers are not big enough? Well, we'll have a disciplinary hearing to uh, punish the contractor. And it's not just public works project. If they had, uh, they have uh, accidents uh, for works in the public private sector, they will also be punished. For these two main may contractors and the consultant, may consultant, should they be removed from the list? Yes or no? Otherwise, uh, your disciplinary system is ineffective. 
because you continue to have fatal accidents and you continue to pay them one hundred billion dollars or two hundred billion dollars and the artificial island has more problems to come. Please tell us the conditions whereby the uh, contractors will be disqualified. Uh, it will uh, be for the disciplinary hearing to investigate into the uh, individual cases. It's not there's no single factor to consider. So that means that they are not going to do anything about it for the projects costing a hundred to two hundred billion dollars. So the this system is as co corrupt as the mainland system. I'm not saying that you are taking bribes. There are many uh, white elephant projects. We have the artificial island, four hundred billion, not counting the third runway, 143.5 billion dollars. Uh, every contractor is eyeing on uh, getting a share of the 800 billion budget. But if you do not uh, speak out and accomplish, you are part and partial of the problem. You said that, that you would look at the uh, record of the uh, contractor in uh, carrying out public works project in the last three years. Oh, that's too bad. You only look at public works project and you ignore other projects. The track record uh, doesn't really reflect the record, the actual record. Although you have the 60-40 uh, split of waiting in tendering, 60% for the quota prices, 40% to performance, including safety. Perhaps uh, you should review the, the tendering documents. It's not desirable to just look at their performance in public works for the last three years. A contractor might not have done anything uh, for the public sector in the last three years. Mr. Lao Siu Lai has given you many st statistics. Those projects are not public works projects and you don't count those. So the performance is not adequate, adequately reflected. <laughs> Can you review the tendering procedure? Well, as I said, uh, we look at the record for the past three years. That's about public works. Now, if there was serious accident, we would not recommend the contractor. Now, about penalties, we don't just look at public works, we look also at private works projects. If they poor, perform poorly there, they, that would also affect their chances of winning the bid. And the Highways Department and the Labor Department are now conducting a survey and we will uh, make recommendations on that basis. <clears throat> now they are investigating this incident. Now. Your tendering uh, program is about the uh, all the entire government uh, projects <laughs> arrangement, but this review will affect our policy. Of course, the Hong Kong to High Macau Bridge. Uh, there's a major accident here, but we we'll, we'll, how will it affect other matters? Also, you mentioned that you look at the past records. You look at the major incidents. I don't know how you classify major accidents, what you consider major accidents. 
will the less serious accidents also be taken into account? So overall, we find that this problem has been very problematic in the past, but yet it still won the bid because of its low price. And it has poor management and poor safety record. How do you improve that? Now, when we talk about serious, serious incidents, it doesn't just include accidents, uh, fatal or uh, in fatalities or injuries. Now, we are uh, ready to conduct reviews uh, all the time. We want to achieve zero accident. We don't just review because of one incident. We conduct reviews all the time. Second round, Lao Siu Lai, Fernando Cheng, and Lan Kuo Hong, three minutes each. Lao Siu Lai. <coughs> uh, as I listened, I felt very sad. The incidents were so serious, and yet the officials' uh, the facial expressions never changed. Now, these contractors had such poor safety records and the past projects all failed with all kinds of collapses. And yet we are told that they can compensate for poor safety record uh, by means of lower bids. So I felt very sad, and the the suspension was for six months. But we have tenderings all the time, so the penalties meant little. So workers' lives have been sacrificed for nothing. Now, these modern projects. Why is it that workers die all the time? And whenever we ask these questions, the officials are, have always been evasive, and they give the same answer. They say that only three points are accorded to safety. They say that the Labor Department says that the penalties will be stepped up. And why is it that the penalty for not preventing falling from height has been reduced from uh, $15,000 to eight or $9,000? We will conduct review to see where we can increase the penalties. This has to go be by uh, amending the legislation. Now, Ms. Lau was referring to sentencing by the court. How the court finds, uh, levies fines, is to be de decided by the judge. Uh, it, who will consider the uh, precedence and the seriousness of each case. The Labor Department has to respect the law. As I mentioned last time, if we see that uh, the penalties are too light in our view in respect of certain cases, we will discuss with the Department of Justice to see whether we need to seek a review of the sentencing. Now, human life is only three points in the tender system. So you see that people's lives cost so little, and uh, money seems paramount in the system. 
have you uh, talked to the Department of Justice? Uh, will you appeal against this reduction in penalty? Now, actually, the penalties in respect of occupational safety have increased. In the past, uh, uh, it, uh, two years ago, it was uh, 20,000, and now it's 28,000 on average. Now, will you ask the DOJ to ask that the DOJ seek an increase in penalty? The DOJ did tell the court that it wishes the penalty to be increased. Will you ask the DOJ to do the same again? On the DOJ telling the court to increase the penalty, I'm not very informed on that. But as I said, if we feel that the penalties by the court are too light, we will discuss with the DOJ to see whether there can be a review. Fernando Chung, just now the commissioner said that he would not be satisfied, so he should proactively try to prevent recurrence of the industrial accidents. But he only tells us there will be seminars and reviews of foreign legislation about a possible increase in penalty in, in, in fines, but there seems to be no timetable. Uh, the, the safety officer arrangement, the arrangements on work sites where there is no independent lifeline, uh, no uh, secure foot uh, position for the uh, feet, uh, and so on. Now, you reply that things are as working as usual, uh, as effectively as they have always been. In China Harbor Engineering, we uh, just now heard members said that they had collapses like the bridge in uh, Indonesia and Harbin, etc. And yet we still have this company as our contractor. Now, these fatalities abroad were not counted. 60% is allocated to the low tender price. If this goes on, how many more people have to die? Ten died from this project. It's a project of blood and tears. And yet the officials uh, have not really reflected on this. The co commissioner referred to seminars, and you said you will review foreign legislation, but is it that there's nothing else you can do? Will companies like China Harbor Engineering continue to win contracts in the future? Will you continue to allow the workers' safety to be compromised under your system so that lives will continue to be lost? Would you want him to reply about the tendering or on the safety policy? Well, up to him. Commissioner, just now I undertook that we will provide a detailed timetable after the meeting. Uh, the measures under our large-scale safety campaign on the timetable for legislation, I will talk to the DOJ to see if we can come up with a more specific timetable. Now, it's been over a month after the bridge accident. Now, we will review legislation abroad. This is just the first step. 
we will have a timetable for legislation, but we cannot give you the specifics today. But I undertake that we'll certainly review our current legislation. I will discuss with the DOJ, and we will submit, provide to you the detailed timetable. And I will, after the meeting, provide to you details of our measures. You have a major plan? We have a major campaign, a large-scale campaign. Can you let us take a look on your program? We had we have a large scale occupational safety campaign which we launched last month and the major measures including more secure scaffolding. Does the document cover the large scale occupational safety campaign? This document mainly is in response to the questions and letters from members. So after the meeting, please provide a document on your large-scale campaign. Next, Yuan Kwok Hong and then Dr. Kwok Ka Ki. Now, we already went over the record of China Harbor Engineering. Then uh, there's the uh, company uh, Chan Ho, uh, Chan Wo. Uh, now it uh, uh, is now even working on uh, uh, desalination, and it bought a forty-seven percent uh, uh, of a company in in the Mo in the Mongolia, uh, and uh, it's now. Cooper Mongolia is now working with Harbor China Harbor Engineering. So how can we regulate them? Both these companies are uh, very uh, privileged organizations. In the Mongolia plus China Harbor Engineering. Now you talk about past performance and so on, but you never really touch upon safety. Your document says that you can regulate them, you can issue warning letters, you can ask for independent safety audits, uh, suspend them from submitting bids, or even remove them from the list of registered contractors for government projects. When have you suspended the qualification? When have you taken these steps? So it's ineffective. Ten people died. You haven't been able to tell us whether you will suspend the eligibility for tendering. Now the Industrial safety, the occupational safety ordinance. Now, this will not touch the big employers. Now, the elderly person, aged 80, had to drive and at night, and it caused accidents. You have been ineffective. It's all useless. The fine is so low. Suspension, no use. Rush in the job. Low bits, killing people. In uh, Mongolia, bought a Hong Kong company. China Harbor Engineering, you don't count the accidents abroad, but you do so for Chan Wo. It's like uh, what I read, the writing by Lu Xun.
takes one company after another, Chen Wu, followed by China Harbor Engineering. 400 billion dollars more. Is it the same way, in the same way that you will proceed? I hope there's a review. Next, uh, Dr. Kwok Ka Ki. What? What? The information is not uh, really accurate. China construction was also involved. Uh, 25 billion dollars. Under our tendering system, well, the tender price can be as low as possible, but they just overrun the cost. They seek additional provisions. This is a very ugly system of transferring benefits in other countries, an accident causing 10 fatalities is regarded very seriously. And the main contractor will be held accountable. If the if there is a fatal accident, would you hold the uh, owner of the holding company criminally accountable for the deaths? Well, this is not <coughs> a new suggestion. The existing labor laws are ineffective. It's just a small fine. The Inner Mongolia Enterprise, China Harbor Engineering, China Construction. <laughs> are not held accountable. Well, we should help people accountable, very much like the mainland. Well, if they want to hold someone accountable for so certain wrongdoing, they can do it on the mainland. Just look at uh, Bo Xi Lai. Uh, perhaps uh, we should uh, move towards the direction of uh, criminalize such uh, accidents uh, in by the director. <laughs> well, wages in rears are uh, used not to contract uh, a criminal liability. Now it is, and we have much fewer cases of default in the wage payments. Yes, can we hold the uh, main contractor or the main person responsible for the project accountable under the existing occupational safety and health uh, legislation? It's not just about imposing a fine. Imprisonment is also part of it. If we want to send the person in charge of the company to prison, we have to pull that the uh, accused is uh, doing this intentionally, and there's no reasonable excuse. So that will not happen. There are multiple tiers of a subcontracting system. Well, they can say that it's just negligence. It's not intentional. I'm uh, explaining that that uh, is the in the existing labor legislation. Can I continue? As I've said, we're looking at existing laws, including the penalties and the provisions to see whether there are, there's any room for improvement to, to make the law a bigger deterrent, a better deterrent. But if we're going to punish a person in charge of a company and send him to the prison where well, the prosecution threshold is going to be very high. We we'll have to talk to the Department of Justice whether we can uh, there's any room to do this. All right? Well, the main culprit is always not, not accountable. All right? Please take specific action to address uh, legal problems. Well, I think that's the end of today's meeting. I hope the departments can conduct proper reviews so as to protect the life of workers. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And I'd also like to thank all the deputations.